So Donald Trump's former attorney general, Bill Barr, made the TV rounds again over the weekend, largely defending the Department of Justice, saying the charges against Trump are not a result of a weaponized DOJ. I don't like, you know, all, the, all these uh, overkill attacks that this was somehow reprehensible to bring it. The, what was reprehensible was the conduct after the election. And it's perfectly to be expected that the Department of Justice would approach it the way it would approach something like this, which is under, under uh, the, the laws against defrauding the United States and obstructing proceedings. I think it's a legitimate case. I, I don't understand the attacks uh, on the department and saying it's abusive or it's weaponization for bringing this case. When someone says, you know, this is unfair, this is part, you know, there's some other motive here, the first question is, okay, was the crime done? Was there serious wrongdoing here? Or is this a case of going after somebody who really didn't do anything or a technical violation or stretching the law way beyond where it should be? No, there was very grave wrongdoing here. And I think it's reasonable to say that it falls within the obstruction of a proceeding. That's not weaponization. That's enforcement hmm. of the law. I am concerned that in a second term, uh, he will be off the hook. There'll be no way of controlling him. And he will also surround himself with yes, yes, men. I mean, David, I, 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 it's important that Barr is talking this way. I, I don't know if, if Trump supporters completely uh, tune him out now, but, you know, you you look at uh, most of the stuff that's on Fox News and it's it's false equivalencies, false moral equivalencies, false legal equivalencies. Uh, the Wall Street Journal editorial page, which had been critical of Donald Trump trying to steal the election and of January the 6th, now bathed in false equivalencies. Everything has to do with Hunter Biden. They can never mention Donald Trump trying to steal an election or stealing nuclear secrets without bringing up Democrats or Hunter Biden or a weaponized DOJ. It's grotesque. Uh, and yet it's a grotesque play that at least 40 percent of Americans are buying. Yeah, I mean, in a, in a sense, their goal is to put the Justice Department on trial here. And I, I think this is the most important trial in the 150-year uh, history of the Justice Department. And if you look, there was a poll recently uh, by Marquette University Law School that showed that roughly 80 percent of Republicans, 80 percent, have little or no confidence in what the Justice Department uh, is doing today. Uh, roughly 80 percent of Democrats uh, have some or a great deal of confidence in what the Justice Department is doing today. So, so that's the, the difference. I spoke with former Justice Department officials, uh, one of whom uh, agreed, talked about Hunter Biden, uh, you know, agreed with these talking points that you just mentioned, that this was an unfair prosecution, that all these prosecutions are being brought now, that he's running for president. Um, others in the department support what's happened. It's just a critical moment for them. And but but, but David, David, though, yes. I mean, how could they say that? Because, you know, in 2019, we said on this show, if Donald Trump loses in 2020, he will run again to avoid prosecution. This is what my torts professor would say when he was setting us up with his Socratic method, he said, and the next thing that comes, you should see like a freight train coming out of the mist. We all saw this coming for four years that he would run again so he could delegitimize all the prosecutions that were clearly coming after him, more so after January the 6th. How could anybody in the DOJ, how could anybody at the Wall Street Journal editorial page, how could anybody on Fox News make any of these arguments with a straight face when we all saw it coming years ago? I agree. It was very clear it was coming. And, and one of the criticisms of Merrick Garland's Justice Department is why it took so long to bring this indictment. Um, it was clear from the moment Garland took office that this was going to be a central question. The most powerful investigation against Donald Trump regarding January 6th would be conducted by the Justice Department, not by Congress. The, the power of a grand jury to get to the truth. So why did it take so long is one question. And then just what Kati said earlier about our calcified politics. I looked at the polls leading up to Watergate and the resignation of, of uh, Richard Nixon. With each step along the way, there was a bipartisan hearing in Congress that knocked down 
uh, President Nixon numbers. Then there was federal indictments of some of Nixon's aides that by the DOJ that knocked down his numbers. And then finally, it was the unanimous Supreme Court ruling that brought his disapproval rating to 59 percent. It was 59 percent, and then he resigned. We don't have those kind of body blows from each branch of government coming today, and Trump wants this. I think he'd be happy if he was jailed bluntly by Judge Chutka, because that would, you know, play into his, his narrative that he's the victim of some deep state plot. Sam? Yeah, just for that point, if you recall back to uh, the end of the last Congress, uh, the impeachment trial, the second impeachment trial of Trump, uh, one of the reasons that Republicans voted against conviction, including Mitch McConnell, was precisely that they're saying, look, the legal system can handle this. Uh, he is not going to be president. Uh, we are we're inaugurating Joe Biden. Uh, let's let the legal system work out what is uh, uh, objectively uh, cri criminal conduct. Now that we're at the point where the legal system is handling this, of course, a lot of Republicans are now saying, no, 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 we should wait till the next election. Uh, let the voters decide on this. And so it's just kicking the can down the road. I, I actually had a, a sort of a technical question for Joyce because I, I was neither a, a lawyer in Alabama nor in L.A., uh, but I, I am kind of curious, how does, let's say the judge does get to this point where she says, uh, you know, I have to issue a protective order or a gag order. How does that work in this context? Trump is still a candidate for president. He is still running against Mike Pence, who will likely be a witness uh, in this trial. How do, how do you stop him? Where is the how do they draw a line that says, no, you cannot talk about uh, your prosecution, even though it's such a central part of your election strategy, or you can't talk about Mike Pence, even though you're running against him? So apparently you don't have to have practiced law in lower Alabama to appreciate the difficulty <laughs> that the court faces Thank you, here. Joyce. I think, <laughs> you know, you've identified exactly the problem. Trump is talking a lot about his First Amendment rights as a defense to this lawsuit. First Amendment appears in a different context here. As a candidate, how do you gag him while he's running for political office? That's why Judge Chutkin... I think we'll see her try to use all of the tools at her disposal, short of a gag order, working with the lawyers, laying down very clear rules for the former president. That's why the effort was made during his arraignment by the magistrate judge to advise him not to do this. They're going to try to ask him to cabin his own behavior rather than formally gagging him because of the implications that that has in the political process. And that's just a reality here. That's not to say that Trump is being treated of, uh, differently than other criminal defendants, but Trump is actually different than other criminal defendants in this one regard. He will have to have a First Amendment right on the campaign trail. He can criticize Mike Pence, but what he can't do and where that line exists is he can't intimidate him from testifying. And ultimately, he can't paint the jury pool. That line is not a black and white one. It, it will be more art than science discerning it. So this is a complicated problem. I don't want to pretend it's easier than it is. The court still has an obligation to ensure that the government is treated fairly, as is the defendant.